All right, we're about to get started. Um, the next session is by uh, uh, Dennis. He's from the Naturalis Museum in uh, Leiden. Is Leiden? Yeah. yeah, in Leiden. And he will uh, uh, talk to us about uh, the uh, infrastructure they've, uh, they've built there. So uh, uh, enjoy. Yes, hello everyone. Um, this talk is about something entirely different, about dinosaurs. And uh, let's start with an introduction. Behind me you see Trix, which is an actual T-Rex that lived about 66 million years ago. And she is now one of the main attractions in our uh, Natural History, uh, History Museum in Leiden. Also introducing myself a bit. I'm living and working in Leiden as well. Um, I put it like I, I identify as a homo sapiens a meager 38 years of age. And uh, I moved to, to Leiden to study political science and I ended up as a member of the IT crowd at Naturalis. A couple of them are sitting over there as well. In my free time I work as a volunteer in a social center called uh, Vrijplaats Leiden. So if you happen to be in Leiden, uh, please come and visit us. or contact me if you want to organize an open source event, a hackathon or something. And talking about open source, I've, uh, I'm an open source enthusiast since, ever since installing Debian for the first time in 2004 already. And I've been coming to FOSDEM ever since 2012, so this is my ninth edition with my first talk here, so that's quite nice. And it's always been a really inspiring overwhelming sometimes and uh, for sure exhausting experience two days of talks and talks and information and as a result uh, the last couple of years we've applied all kinds of tools and practices uh, at Naturalis in inspired by talks at Foslem um, and I think that's also um, a big part of the job as IT operator is to actually try and to determine the right approach, the right tools, uh, and how to use them best for your job. Um, and there's a over, uh, really a lot, like uh, because of the 800 talks or something here at FOSDEM. Um, so in this talk, I want to present a kind of a real, real world use case um, I, I skip, skim through the program and a lot of developers are uh, talking about what they made for, for me, for example, as an operator. But this is the other perspective um, and I hope it's useful. And i like to give you a, a glimpse of uh, the way we dealt with the challenge of applying all those wonderful, powerful open source tools to a... Um, um, to a domain that has been until, up until recently really fixated on propri proprietary solutions. Um, and the goal of this talk is not to try and paint as if we uh, have the ideal universal solution or something. It's just, uh, uh, I hope it's interesting for you guys and girls to see uh, how we managed uh, with, with the problems of building a museum. Um, and we're actually quite proud, of course, of what we achieved with our implementation, but it's really far from per perfect. Um, and I want to basically, after sh uh, explaining a bit about the use case, uh, show, uh, tell, be, uh, tell a bit more about the circumstances we had to work in, uh, our, the approach we took, the things we achieved, the end result, and, in, and the, at the end, I'll uh, have some clo closing comments. So, what was actually the use case? Um, we were asked to deploy and manage an entirely new natural history, history museum, consisting of 10 exhibitions and experiences uh, with all kinds of uh, technologies like media players, projectors, microcontrollers, interactives, all that kind of stuff. A uh, campus network, 
um, uh, because it was a new building, and all the management tools around that. Um, and to get a bit of an idea about the circumstances, uh, a bit about our institute, Naturalis Biodiversity Center, uh, first and foremost, we're a, uh, the manager of the National Natural History Collection. We have 40 million specimens stored in a big tower and also a new part of the building uh, with lots of old artifacts, small insects, so, uh, all the elephants, uh, anything you can, uh, can think of. Um, apart from that, we are a research institute as well. So like we have at least 100 researchers doing all kinds of research related to biodiversity. And we're a natural history museum, which is really popular with families and kids. But that poses a really fundamental challenge for us as a support organization, because basically the uh, biodiversity in our institute is kind of the central theme. And basically anything people can think of what they can do related to biodiversity, they do. So, and we have to support that. So building a museum, having a cloud for researchers doing their analysis, all that kind of stuff. So that is difficult to do everything re really well. Um, Starting uh, the project, um, at the start of the project, we uh, already had quite a bit of technical expertise in-house. So we have a, like an IT department of 30, 35 people with operators, developers, support. Uh, and in the, the operators were re relatively well first in conflict management already. We used Puppet and Foreman uh, uh, specifically for uh, deploying uh, web services. We have an infrastructure based on OpenStack and Ceph. We've done some um, uh, experiments, so to say, on uh, Kubernetes. We also canceled these. Um, <laughs> and uh, for example, we've uh, uh, done an analytics based on Sensu, the Elk stack, Grafana. So that's also not normal for a, a regular museum, doesn't have this IT stuff uh, in the Netherlands at least. Uh, <coughs> as I mentioned, um, we built a new museum and what you can see here is the museum actually being constructed. Uh, the part on the left, that's the uh, new part um, and that's also the museum part. It's completely new. And when actually running the project, this wasn't ready. So we had to start building stuff uh, when we couldn't actually access the, the building um, or when we, it wasn't even completely finished when we uh, started uh, building stuff in the building. Um, and apart from that, uh, we had to work together, or we worked together with an uh, internal museum department uh, which was really used to working with suppliers uh, that yeah, just were fix fixated on proprietary solutions, media players, all kinds of show controllers. Um, and in general, the museum building industry, if you can call it that, is, well, on a positive note, it's just starting to be influenced by best practices uh, from IT and DevOps. Um, I put their cattle versus pets, it's like a big question mark for them. They didn't even consider it. It's like everything in a museum is considered like a, this special special thing. And they, they basically are used to just making that thing and then, uh, well, here you have it and you, you, you maintain it or something. So, um, also in a museum, uh, you have to deal with a broad set of technologies as I mentioned, audio and video players, Unity games in this uh, uh, instance, show controllers, KNX, gateways, microcontroller, all kinds of stuff. And of course, with a tight schedule, also known as no proper time for testing. We used to have a testing phase, but it got squashed 
uh, and basically we didn't have any <coughs> testing phase. So in similar situations in other museums, basically a museum would hire an external company or several companies who would then build and deliver a infrastructure. If you're lucky, according to, you could set requirements as an internal support organization and then if you're actually really lucky, it, they would deliver something that integrates with the other things you do. Um, so in an effort to keep the diversity of technologies that we have to manage, to keep that down and limited, our approach was to actually build on the existing in infrastructure uh, and know-how within the uh, organization and to get involved really early in the process. We had a bit of a um, struggle to keep, to get that message across internally. Uh, uh, yeah, so there was quite a bit of politics uh, involved, but we, uh, we just uh, hold on uh, to our ideas. And as a publicly funded institute, I think that's also really Im important. Uh, and just believing in the power of free and open source software, our aim was to uh, use as much open source components as feasible. Um, and, and to combine this with a infra as code and DevOps practice. So ideally, our ideal was that Basically, every variable that actually determines the, the workings of the museum, we would have under control, under version control, and uh, have it managed. That was our ideal, to make everything, like deployments, repeatable. Um, so, quite early in the process, we made this kind of architecture diagram to make a bit of an overview. I'll go over it uh, quickly. Um, the, the, basically, the issue was that on the top uh, you see uh, different groups. Uh, th these are not the visitors, but the users of the management or the technical infrastructure, so to say. But that also those are a diverse group. And on the bottom you see, let's say, an illustration of the diversity of all the uh, equipment we had to, to manage. Um, the blue line uh, involves quite a bit of uh, open source management tools. I won't go to, into too much details about those. Um, we use GitLab for uh, version control, Mattermost for kind of chat ops, Hugo for documentation, uh, uh, Nextcloud for content management, Sensium Prometheus for monitoring, and also we have to use top disks for some reason. Um, and of course, in the middle of it all uh, is Ansible AWX. It's kind of, uh, basically the design is put Ansible in the center and make it like the lingua franca of, the, of our automation. And it was, this, this diagram didn't really change much during the, uh, during the project. It's kind of filling in the boxes, so it wasn't, useful overview also to explain to others in the organization, okay, this is roughly what we're gonna build. Uh, and also the choice for Ansible. Uh, we didn't have too much experience with Ansible at the start of the project, um, but we have to, I'm gonna admit something here. We have uh, worked for a, um, uh, another museum in, uh, in Leiden, Museum Boerhaven, and uh, that was a bit of our guinea pig testing ground. I'm not sure if they're watching, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> now basically we, uh, they asked us to help out with their new exhibition, but there we got involved really late in the process. So basically there was already a supplier and he had already installed Ubuntu Linux on uh, computers by hand and then we had to deploy the applications. So what we did was just make a simple inventory of all those computers and uh, with some Ansible playbooks, we could actually manage that part. And I think that's an important feature. Although we, we, couldn't, we didn't have control on, on the whole situation, we could manage quite well that specific thing. 
and Ansible allowed us to do that. It wasn't an or nothing situation. And the choice for Ansible also was that um, it was really the most popular config management tool for network automation. So the, um, the promise of being able to use the same config management tool for basically across the entire spectrum of, our, of the museum and maybe even the rest of our infrastructure that was really appealing for us. So I'm now going to try to get, get, give you an impression of how far we got with that. Um, so starting with deployment, we have uh, the network switches. We use Cumulus Linux for, uh, for the switches. So those are the idea is that you have white box switches like servers where you can install Linux on the switches. Uh, we use a, a process for deploying Cumulus Linux on those switches based on the only bootloader and Z ZTP, like zero touch provisioning to get Cumulus Linux on those switches. But as you remember, we uh, didn't have access to the building <coughs> and um, we also didn't have um, switches. So we started testing on uh, virtual machines. Uh, because it's just Debian, basically, uh, we could just build the entire uh, campus network uh, in a virtual environment. Uh, for computers, so we have small form factor computers for uh, all our interactive and media players. We deploy those with Ubuntu Mass, Metal as a Service. So we can, based on Ansible scripts from AWX, we can commission and deploy computers from scratch. Uh, config management. So for the um, switches, we have some base roles um, that are shared between all the switches, and then we use template templating and some templates for the, the spines or the core switches and for the leaf switches. Uh, a lot of vendors have their specific Ansible modules. With Cumulus Linux, we could just use templates. The same for our computers. So we have several base roles, like uh, for the inter all the interactive computers, museum computers, and then on top of them, we would uh, uh, deploy games. In basically, we all run Unity 3D games because they don't make anything else. Uh, MPV for media players and a Chromium-based uh, digital signage. Uh, but also we uh, do content provisioning, well not on the switches, but on the computers. Uh, we uh, selected Nextcloud, uh, so we would have a, a place for our content providers, software providers to put the content on and then with a uh, small script we have item potent uh, uh, content updates on the computers. But, and based on that we do also some kind of orchestration workflows. For example, that in one workflow, we would configure a network port for a specific device in the museum and then actually deploy the computer from scratch, Ubuntu Linux, all the, uh, the specific role of that computer, the content of it, and uh, at the end of the process, you would have a functioning thing. Um, but yeah. We got started with automation, and then we thought, okay, we have also microcontrollers running Arduino. So we selected Platform I.O. to actually deploy the firmware on the microcontrollers as well. So we typically would have a computer with an Arduino uh, microcontroller connected to it, mostly USB-based, and then basically as part of the deployment, it would also... Uh, deploy the specific firmware for that setup. We manage uh, projectors. Unfortunately, uh, the suppliers of the projectors don't have like open firmware or something like that on the projectors. But well, so we didn't implement that. But we did some basics like the network configuration of those things, sensor checks on it, uh, turning uh, as a part of the workflows. 
turning on and off the, the projectors when starting an exhibition, stuff like that. And also, for example, we have a KNX uh, gateway to actually uh, uh, stop or start the power supply in an exhibition, stuff like that. And we actually did that by mapping KNX data points or addresses to uh, Ansible hosts. So you can use the groupings in Ansible uh, uh, just like you used to. So as you can see, it's already quite a bit of scope. And the nice thing is we use AWX uh, Ansible Tower um, to actually delegate this whole package to, uh, to uh, personnel who isn't experienced in all this automation stuff. So for example, turning on the entire museum is done from AWX by someone who works for the security every morning. Uh, and we can also just schedule it, redeploy something entirely from scratch. It's six in the morning before the museum starts. We can do that. So, and this is kind of the uh, end result. So we have, uh, 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 this is one of the exhibitions about uh, geology. Uh, we have a, a Ice Age uh, exhibition with, with games and, uh, and uh, microcontrollers. Uh, projections based on MPV uh, and plenty more. Uh, so to wrap, to wrap things up, I think in general, I think uh, what we learned at least is that our specific local circumstances are really, really vital to uh, for the choices you make, uh, technical and organizational choices we make. Uh, for us, uh, a kind of relative simple and first tool is really ideal for an organization like us, who has to support a really wide range of services. Uh, and also Ansible is really suitable for uh, and forgiving for imperfect environments. So you don't have to fit your entire world into kind of the paradigm of the tool, uh, Ansible is so like uh, yeah, forgiving and simple that it, it can work in an imperfect environment as well. And of course, although we did not succeed using open source tools for every aspect of the museum, I think we came pretty far. So to conclude, I think dinosaurs are definitely doomed. Because even in the, these kind of challenge, challenging circumstances like tight schedule, a, a sector that's not really uh, happy to change their ways in pr 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 proprietary solutions, uh, I think our case shows that it's even in, the, in those circumstances possible to give the proverb, proverbial dinosaurs of your industry the boot. So, if you want to know more, uh, we can have a chat. Uh, there's two more presentations about the museum. Tomorrow, I'll give a lightning talk about our usage of MPV. On Monday, on, uh, uh, I do a talk on Config Management Camp. I'll go a bit, it's like the sequel of the Dinosaurs Are Doomed One. And uh, I'll go a bit more into detail about our workflows. You can come and visit us in the museum or check out our code. Thank you.